Hello, darkness, my old friend. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the most epic, emotionally fulfilling instances of harmony in music. Dream, 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 dream. Number 10, You've Lost That Love and Feeling, The Righteous Brothers. What constitutes a perfect vocal harmony? They're everywhere in music, but the best ones reach out, grab our hearts, and make us feel something. We had a love, a love, a love you don't find every day. Call it the chills, nostalgia, or simply that love and feeling, but we know it when we hear it. The Righteous Brothers work perfectly off each other here on 1964's You've Lost That Love and Feeling, while Phil Spector's Wall of Sound production amplifies everything to evoke a certain time and place. Medley's lead baritone vocal sets everything up before Bobby Hatfield hits the high harmony for the chorus. Hatfield also delivers some banger high notes near the song's tail end, but it's all about that chorus, man. Number 9, Be My Baby, The Raw Nets. We're sticking with the Phil Spector Wall of Sound style here once again for our next entry, an absolute classic slice of early 60s pop. Ronnie Spector, then under the name Veronica Bennett, is actually the only member of the Ronettes to sing on the track, overdubbing all of the backing harmonies that lift up her soaring vibrato. sweetly sung backing oohs and ahs that make Bennett's already powerful work on the chorus feel truly iconic. The end result evoke those nostalgic, slightly sad memories that make Be My Baby tug at so many heartstrings. <laughs> Number 8, Turn, 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 The Birds. To everything turn, turn. The Birds may not have written Turn, Turn, Turn. That honor belongs to folk singer Pete Seeger, but it's their version that's arguably gone down as the most well-known. It also doesn't feel unfair to surmise that the band's amazing harmony vocal work helped make their take on Turn, Turn, Turn feel so indicative of the 1960s. Roger McGuinn takes the lead, while David Crosby and Gene Clark assist on harmony vocals, and it's truly the stuff of magic. It's still folky, sure, but there's also a rock backbeat, and a proto-psychedelia that would define the bird's musical direction into the future. The vocals are insistent and captivating, possessing this glorious echo that makes Turn 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 feel and sound like no other song from the era. Number 7, God Only Knows, The Beach Boys. One does not simply discuss rock vocal harmonies without praying at the altar of the Beach Boys. It doesn't matter if we're listening to the old school surf rock fun of I Get Around or our number seven entry, God Only Knows. The Beach Boys are absolute masters of their craft. You never need to doubt it. I'll make you so sure about it. A bevy of instruments were laid down in the studio for this latter song, including everything from sleigh bells and clarinets to everyday kitchen cups. At the end of the day, however, it's all about how Brian Wilson and Bruce Johnston harmonize Carl Wilson's soaring lead vocal. This is a tender yet deceptively complex song with devastating arrangements and the kind of vocal performances that make the goosebumps rise and the hair stand on end. God only knows what I Number six, because the Beatles. Because the world is round, it turns me on. The Beatles were another band whose career trajectory saw them embracing some of the most forward-thinking vocal arrangements to go along with their influential songwriting talents. 
because from 1969 could not sound further removed from the band's early pop hits, but instead feels more at home with late period gems like Eleanor Rigby and While My Guitar Gently Weeps. The direct inspiration from Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata lends because a gothic and grandiose atmosphere, like something out of the Castlevania franchise. Elsewhere, the Moog synthesizer and electric harpsichord underline those haunting vocal harmonies that stress that aforementioned melody lift from Beethoven. It's brilliant stuff. It makes me cry. Number 5. Thank You for the Music, ABBA. But I have a talent. A wonderful thing, cause everyone listens when I start to sing. The opening of Thank You for the Music by ABBA sounds like a Broadway show tune, which is fitting because it would later be used in Mamma Mia. There's a grand cabaret style to this track that's not quite the disco for which ABBA was largely known, but more of a sweeping pop ballad with great vocal harmonies. What will I be? The group had already proved they could deliver some amazing harmonies on songs like Knowing Me, Knowing You, and Thank You for the Music underlines this fact in a great way. The chorus sounds particularly massive, as Agneta Feldskog handles the lead, while Anifried Linkstad and the other backing vocals echo Feldskog in fantastic fashion. So I say thank you for the music, for giving it to me. Number 4. The Sound of Silence, Simon and Garfunkel. No one did disturb the sound of silence. It seems difficult to believe that the debut album from Simon and Garfunkel, featuring the original version of The Sound of Silence, failed to make an impact back in 1964. Yet if that hadn't happened, then perhaps we'd never have this 1965 remix to enjoy. A take many feel is the definitive version of the song. Hear my words that I might teach you. Take my arms that I might reach you. The electrified instrumentation doesn't hamper the folk duo's amazing harmony vocals. If anything, they amplify how the Sound of Silence resounds as a defining song of the 1960s, an evocative tune where Simon and Garfunkel become, almost in an instant, icons of their generation. This reputation would be further cemented on tearjerkers like 1970s Bridge Over Troubled Water. I'm sailing right behind. Number 3. Seven Bridges Road, The Eagles. Stars in the southern sky. The dude may hate the Eagles, but even he probably couldn't deny the vocal harmonies present on their version of Steve Young's Seven Bridges Road. Or maybe we better address the elephant in the room by calling it Ian Matthews' arrangement of Seven Bridges Road that was allegedly heisted by the Eagles for their 1980 hit. And I had you in the same way. It doesn't really matter on which side of the argument you lay because there's no denying that this live track really captures how well the band harmonized out on stage. The quintuple harmony in particular is incredible to behold, creating a moment of musical history that's difficult to beat. The control and attention to detail is just astounding. Down the seven bridges Number two. California Dreamin', The Mamas and the Papas. All the leaves are brown, the leaves are brown, and the sky is gray. The musical climate of the 1960s was one that supported huge growth, from West Coast folk and psych rock to psychedelia and British invasion imports. The Mamas and the Papas were from the former camp, and their hit California Dreamin' is perhaps the song that could serve as a time capsule relic from this very important decade. The lead vocal by Denny Doherty, as well as the harmonies by John and Michelle Phillips with Cass Elliot, were actually laid over instrumentation by the Barry McGuire version of the song. Yet it's the Mamas and the Papas' warm harmonies, together with a ghostly improvised flute solo by Bud Shank, that makes California Dreamin' one for the ages. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. 
Angel, Aerosmith, a power ballad for the ages. You're the reason I die. You're the reason I when I break down and cry. When something is wrong with my baby, Sam and Dave, the beauty of soul. Something is wrong. Knoxville Girl, The Leuven Brothers, Blood Harmony for a Murder Ballad. I told my anxious mother I was bleeding at my nose. My Immortal, Evanescence, Shut Up, You're Crying. When you cried, I'd wipe away all of your tears. Alone, Heart, Anne and Nancy Forever. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, all I have to do is dream. The Everly Brothers. I need you so that I can die. What is it about pop hits from the 1950s that make us cry every single time? There's an innocence and nostalgia associated with songs like All I Have to Do is Dream that makes the listener yearn for a time and place that may or may not exist. The harmonies of the Everly Brothers on here are bittersweet and slightly melancholic. Only trouble is, gee whiz, I'm dreaming my life. Their voices evoke imagery so closely associated with this decade. Sharing milkshakes, young sweethearts holding hands at the drive-in, and those same sweethearts dancing close to this song. The Everly Brothers captured lightning in a bottle with All I Have to Do is Dream, their harmonious voices achieving not only Billboard chart success, but musical immortality. Do these songs make us feel the way they do? What makes a great vocal harmony, and who are some artists who carry this torch in the modern day? Let us know in the comments. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.